this webinar is about the kebab G versus Kaut food case, arbitration case, and in particular about the implications of recent Anglo-French jurisdictional disputes relating to arbitration agreements. So this protracted legal saga is a scathing example of how arbitration proceedings and subsequent arbitral awards can be derailed and gutted out of a substance and power when elementary conditions and basic steps were not complied with and met by the parties to the arbitration proceedings at the outset. So these cracks in the fragile arbitration ecosystem leave the door open to annulment proceedings and court requests to refuse recognition and enforcement of any arbitral award handed down under such circumstances. Therefore, what was supposed to be a confidential, quick and solid alternative dispute resolution process became a seven years very publicized legal proceedings mess involving two crisscrossed court proceedings in France and the United Kingdom, which escalated right to the top of a jurisdictional echelons at the Cour de Cassation and Supreme Court levels. Yet, no pragmatic and tangible outcomes were achieved by the party who wanted the Kebab G versus Kaut Food Arbitral Award to be enforced in the United Kingdom while substantial financial and legal resources were deployed throughout for ultimately nothing. How did the parties to this arbitration, Kebab G versus Kaud Food, end up there? How could this sad state of affair have been avoided? The facts are as follows. Lebanese company Kebab G Sal, KGI, but we are now going to call it from now on, developed a distinctive type of restaurant specializing in Lebanese and other Middle Eastern cuisines and owns trademarks and other rights underpinning this restaurant concept. By a franchise development agreement dated the 6th 16th of July 2001 of the FDA, KGI, acting as licensor, granted a license to the Kuwaiti company Hal Homaizi Foodstuff Company, HFC, as we are going to call it from now on, acting as a licensee to operate a franchise using its restaurant concept in Kuwait for a period of 10 years. End of a franchise development agreement, KGI and AHFC subsequently entered into a total of 10 franchise outlet agreements, FOAs, and together with the uh, franchise development agreement, the franchise agreements, in respect of individual outlets opened in Kuwait. The franchise agreements were all expressly governed by English law and each contained a separate arbitration clause providing for an International Chamber of Commerce ICC arbitration seated in Paris in France. In 2005, AHFC, the licensee, underwent a corporate restructuring Subsequently, a new holding company called Kaut Food Group, KFG, was incorporated and AHFC became a subsidiary of Kaut Food Group, KFG. AHFC parent company, KFG, never signed any one of the franchise agreements. On the 16th of July, 2011, as no new agreement was entered into, the franchise agreements expired after the 10 years term. On the 27th of March, 2015, KGI, the licensor, 
started arbitration proceedings under the rules of ICC in Paris. KGI brought claims under the franchise agreements, not against its licensee HAFC, but against the parents licensee KFG. So KFG challenged the validity of the arbitration claim on the basis that it was neither a party to the franchise agreements, nor hence a party to the arbitration agreement set out in uh, the franchise agreements. The relevant clauses of the FDA were Article 3, entitled Grants of License. Subclause 3.1 provided license. This grant is intended to be strictly personal in nature to the licensee and no rights here and there whatsoever may be assigned or transferred by licensee in whole or in part without the prior recent approval of the licensor. Article 14 entitled Settlement of Disputes provided 14.2. Any dispute, controversy, or claim between licensor and licensee with respect to any issue arising out of or relating to this agreement or the breach thereof shall, failing amicable settlement on request of licensor or licensee, be finally settled under the ICC rules. Subclause 14.3 provided the arbitrators shall apply the provisions contained in the agreement. The arbitrators shall also apply principles of law generally recognized in international transactions. And in no circumstances shall the arbitrators apply any rules that contradicts the strict wording of the agreement. And then subclause 14.5, provided the arbitration shall be conducted in the English language in Paris, France. Article 15 of the FDA entitled Governing Law provided, this agreement shall be governed by and construed in accordance with the laws of England. Article 19 entitled Rights Not Transferable provided, the parties hereto agree that all rights granted to licensee under this agreement are personal in nature. Licensee's interest under this agreement is not transferable or assignable under any circumstances whatsoever, voluntarily, by operation of law or otherwise, without the written consent of licensor. So what was the procedure in the Kabab G versus Cat Food case? By way of a Kabab G versus Cat Food final arbitral award handed down on the 11th of September 2017, the three arbitrators, Bruno Laurent, President, Mohamed Abdel Wahab, arbitrator appointed by the claimant, Click AGI, and Klaus Reichter, arbitrator appointed by the defendant, KFG, decided by a majority, Klaus Reichert, the only English law arbitrator descending, that the issue of whether or not the arbitrators had jurisdiction under KFG was governed by French law. The arbitrators then applied French law to, to conclude that KFG had become a party to the franchise agreements and was therefore liable to pay to KGI some unpaid license fees accrued between 2008 and 2011, as well as some damages for loss of earnings for breach of the franchise agreements. In December 2017, KFG initiated annulment proceedings of this final arbitral award before the Paris Court of Appeal on grounds which included the contention that the arbitrators had no jurisdiction over KFG since it was not a party to 
and therefore not bound by the franchise agreements and the respective arbitration clauses. KFG also claimed to set aside the arbitral award that the arbitration tribunal should have applied English law as the law which the parties had expressly chosen to govern the entirety of the franchise agreements, including the arbitration agreements contained therein. Also in December 2017, KGI issued proceedings in the English Commercial Court in London in order to enforce the arbitral award dated 11th of September 2017 as a judgment. KFG made a cross application in these proceedings for an order that the recognition and enforcement of this arbitral award in England be refused on the basis that it was not bound by the franchise agreements and their arbitration clauses, relying on Article 5.1 of the New York Convention and Section 103.103 of the Arbitration Act 1996. In the first judgment to be issued in these crisscrossed parallel proceedings, this first judgment was the High Court judgment in KGI Lebanon versus KFG Kuwait from 2019, dated 29th of March 2019. So in this first judgment to be issued in these parallel proceedings, the English Commercial Court ruled that English law, the law of the franchise agreements, governed the validity of the arbitration agreements. The English court, however, adjourned a final decision on whether KFG was bound by the arbitration agreements. KGI appealed this decision to the English Court of Appeal, which delivered its judgment on the 20th of January, 2020. The English Court of Appeal refused recognition and enforcement of the arbitral award dated 11th of September 2017 in England and Wales. And KGI appealed this decision to the Supreme Court afterwards. Meanwhile, the Paris Court of Appeal handed down its judgment on the 23rd of June 2020 in the French annulment proceedings of the final arbitral award dated 11th of September 2017, brought by KFG. The Court of Appeal rejected KFG's claims on all grounds, deciding that the party's designation of English law as generally governing the franchise agreements did not amount to establishing the requisite common will of the parties, as is set out in the decision, to also submit the arbitration agreements to English law. The Paris Court of Appeal also noted that generally recognized principle of law established that the substantive law of the place of the seat of arbitration should apply to determinations involving the arbitration clause. Accordingly, applying French law, the Court of Appeal found that the arbitration agreements could be extended to a non-signatory directly involved in the performance of the franchise agreements and in any disputes arising out of these franchise agreements. It therefore dismissed KFG's annulment action. KFG lodged an appeal in cassation, in cassation of this judgment issued by the Paris Court of Appeal with the French Supreme Court, the Cour de Cassation. In its judgment dated 27th of October 2021, meanwhile, the UK Supreme Court reached the opposite conclusion from the one formed by the Paris Court of Appeals. The UK Supreme Court concluded that English law governed 
the question of whether KFG became a party to the arbitration agreements, because the parties chose English law to govern the franchise agreements, and the parties expressly stated that English law would govern all provisions of the franchise agreements, including the arbitration agreements. The UK Supreme Court was clear in line with the earlier case, UK Supreme Court's decision of Enka Insat versus Sanaye AS, the triple uh, insurance company Chubb from 2020, that, and I quote here, it seems difficult to resist the conclusion that a general choice of law clause in a written contract containing an arbitration clause will normally be a sufficient indication of the law to which the parties subjected the arbitration agreements. And again, I quote, we would endorse the conclusion of the judge and the Court of Appeal that the law governing the question of whether KFG became a party to the arbitration agreement is English law. And again, I quote, clause 14.3 of the uh, uh, Franchise and Development Agreement does not detract from the choice of English law as the law which under section 103 of the 1996 Arbitration Act, the English court must apply to determine whether KFG became a party to the arbitration agreement within the Franchise and Development Agreement. In the result, the UK Supreme Court concluded in its judgment by Article 15 of the Fran Franchise and Development Agreement, English law governs the whole of the uh, Franchise and Development Agreement, including the arbitration clause. Applying English law, the UK Supreme Court confirmed that KFG was not bound by the arbitration agreements between AHFC and KGI and unanimously dismissed KGI's appeal. Therefore, to this day, the above men mentioned 2017 arbitral award is and remains an unforeseeable in the United Kingdom by KGI on KFG's assets and, of course, on the licensees, AHFC's assets. In its judgment dated 28th of September 2022, the Cour de Cassation in France upheld the decision of the Paris Court of Appeal. It held that, under French law, the law of a seat will govern an arbitration agreement including its validity and effectiveness, except where the parties expressly submit the validity and effects of the arbitration agreement to a different choice of law. In reaching this conclusion, the Cour de Cassation rejected KFG's argument that the franchise agreement's choice of law clause should apply to the entire agreement, including the arbitration clauses, because one, the franchise agreement stipulated that they should be interpreted as a single agreement. And number two, the arbitration agreement itself explicitly instructed the arbitrators to apply the provisions of the franchise agreements and prohibited the arbitrators from applying rules that would contradict the franchise agreements. On the contrary, the Court de Cassation held that pursuant to substantive rule of international arbitration, an arbitration agreement is legally independent from the underlying contract wherein it is contained. By virtue of French law, the existence and effectiveness of the arbitration agreement is determined by the common will of the parties. According to the Court de Cassation, the parties' choice of English law as the substantive law of the contracts did not evidence common will to designate English law as the law governing the arbitration agreements. Because the arbitration agreements referred to a Paris seat of arbitration, the substantive rules of the seat, i.e. the material rules of French law in the field of international arbitration, applied to the determination as to whether a non-signatory was bound by an arbitration agreement. And a French law, KFG was bound by the arbitration agreements. Therefore, to this day, 
the above mentioned 2017 arbitral award is and remains enforceable in France by KGI on KFG's assets, provided, of course, that KFG uh, has some assets in France. So in view of all that we've discussed up to now in the facts and the procedure, and from a pragmatic standpoint, it is worth noting that KGI can enforce the 2017 arbitral award in France, but not in the United Kingdom on KFG's assets. So what are the key findings from the Kebab G versus Kout Food case? First and foremost, it is essential to always explicitly set out the law governing the arbitration agreement in the arbitration clause. If there is one takeaway from this case, it's that. If the arbitration clause set out in the franchise agreements had been explicit and clear as to which law governed the arbitration agreement, none of this confusion and no diverging court decisions would have ensued. If the parties do not specify the law governing an arbitration agreement, they run the risk of conflicting outcomes across jurisdictions and potentially protracted court proceedings as seen in this Kebabji versus Kout Food case regarding the validity and enforceability of an arbitral award. This risk is particularly acute where the substantive law of a contract and the law of a seat of the arbitration differ, like in this matter. Given that the Cour de Cassation left open that common will of the parties, if expressed, could be sufficient to submit the effectiveness of the arbitration agreement to another law than that of the French seat, it is obviously essential when agreeing to an ICC Paris arbitration to provide in a clause equivalent to the uh, previously mentioned Article 15 of the uh, franchise and development agreement in this case, some express provisions such as this agreement, including the arbitration provided for in clause 14.2 above, shall be governed by and construed in accordance with the laws of England. That would be an explicit and clear uh, clause in relation to arbitration. The standard arbitration clauses provided by some arbitral institutions such as the standard ICC arbitration clause, do not address the issue of the law of the arbitration agreement. To the extent that parties use such clauses, such template clauses, they should amend them in order to set out the law governing the arbitration agreement explicitly. And arbitration institutions, such as the ICC, should promptly amend the standard arbitration clauses in order to add appropriate language for parties to explicitly set out the law governing their arbitration agreements. The second key finding from this Kebabji versus Keltfood case is that before filing a court claim, you need to be mindful of the fact that two systems of law, the French and the English systems of law in this case, will stay true to their legal traditions and principles, even if this brings to diverging results across countries, as far as the law applicable to the arbitration agreement is concerned. So this Kebabji versus Kautfut case demonstrates the inconsistent approach of how the law applicable to the arbitration agreement may be determined. With the Paris Appeal Court and then the Cour de Cassation confirming the long-standing French position on the law applicable to an arbitration agreement faced with an express choice of Paris as the seat of arbitration, that even when the franchise agreements are governed by English law, it is the substantive rules of French arbitration law which govern the validity of the arbitration clause, including who is a party to it. And with the London Commercial Court, the UK Court of Appeal and then the UK Supreme Court, confirming that the law governing the validity of the arbitration agreement was English law in compliance with the previously mentioned precedent, Enka Ensat v. Sanayi 
AS versus Triple O insurance company Chubb, which sets out when an arbitration agreement is silent as to its governing law, the law expressly chosen by the parties to govern the contract as a whole is generally interpreted to govern the arbitration agreement. See, French system, in UK system, completely diverging outcomes. Indeed, KGI, the uh, uh, licensor, wasted money in legal fees and court fees by attempting to enforce the 2017 Kebab G versus Cat Food Arbitral Award in the United Kingdom against KFG's assets, while it was clear from the outset that UK courts would never agree with the rationale and legal agreements which underpinned that final arbitral award from 2017. KG may waste even more money if it was to file further court proceedings in any other Anglo-Saxon jurisdictions, such as the United States of America or Hong Kong, and would definitely lose if it was to file further court proceedings for enforcement and recognition of this 2017 arbitral award in countries belonging to the Commonwealth, such as Antigua and Barbada, Australia, the Bahamas, Belize, uh, Grenada, Jamaica, New Zealand, uh, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, and Solomon Islands, Tuvalu, and also in the Channel Islands, Jersey and Guernsey. Indeed, via a combination of the application of the New York Convention and the influence of a Judicial Committee of a Privy Council, there is no way that any one of these above mentioned countries, many of them tax havens, where KFG may very well have stashed some bank accounts and reserves, would recognize and enforce the 2017 arbitration award on their soil. No, they would rely on the uh, decision from the UK Supreme Court, which had ref refused to enforce such arbitral award, and they would definitely not enforce and recognize such uh, arbitral award on their soil. The third and final takeaway from this um, kebab G versus uh, cat food case is the dilemma as to whether to give a strict interpretation of the franchise agreements or whether to pierce the corporate veil. Strict interpretation of a franchise agreement or piercing the corporate veil, that is the question. As seen in this case, English courts are also stuck to their guns in relation to making a strict interpretation of a franchise agreement, and in particular of the above mentioned articles 3, 13, 14 and 19 of a franchise and development agreement, emphasizing that the franchise agreements had solely been entered into by KGI as licensor and AHFC as licensee, even after the 2005 restructuring when KFG became AHFC's parent company. The Commercial Court Court of uh, Appeal and UK Supreme Court absolutely refused to pierce the corporate veil, uh, i.e. to hand down a decision treating the rights or duties of a corporation as the rights or liabilities of its shareholders and or its parent company. This refusal to pierce the corporate veil is in compliance with English law, which was, after all, the governing law of the franchise agreements. The main argument of these UK courts was that should the parties to the franchise agreements had wanted to make AFG an additional party to these contracts, they would have amended such franchise agreements accordingly and or obtained the prior written approval of KGI, the licensor, between 2005 i.e. the date of a corporate restructuring, and the 16th of July 2011, i.e. the termination date of a franchise agreement. Yet, the ICC arbitral tribunal, seated in Paris, and then the French court, took a much more Mediterranean approach to the key questions as to whether KFG could be deemed to be a party to the franchise agreements, 
end to the arbitration agreements set out in these franchise agreements for that matter. And therefore, the ICC arbitral tribunal, as well as the French courts, decided that KFG, the parent company, could be held responsible for the actions and the liabilities of its subsidiary, AHFC. The answers to the three questions were yes, yes, and yes, under French law, apparently, as this case il il illustrates. Yes, uh, KFG could be deemed to be a party to a franchise agreement. Yes, KFG could be deemed to be a, 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 a party to the arbitration agreements included in those franchise agreements. And yes, KFG could be held responsible for the actions and liabilities of its subsidiary H A AHFC, apparently under French law. While there is no express legislation setting out that lifting the corporate veil is lawful in France, and de rigueur as well in France, well-established case law from the Cour de Cassation recognizes that piercing the corporate veil is appropriate when a parent company takes part in business negotiations and or in the business activities of its subsidiary. In this matter, Kebab G versus Count Food, the Paris Court of Appeal clearly sets out in its judgment dated 23rd of June 2020, that several pieces of evidence prove that KFG was running and managing the various kebab G restaurants in Kuwait while AHFC no longer ran the show. Therefore, according to the Paris Court of Appeal and then the Court de Cassation, it was appropriate to lift the corporate veil under the circumstances and pass on any liabilities and obligations of, of AHFC to its parent, KFG. Consequently, parties to a commercial agreement which contains an arbitration clause must therefore be very cautious when they select the law governing the arbitration agreement as to whether it is in their best interest to choose either a law which takes a rigid and strict approach in relation to interpreting the clauses of a commercial agreement and respecting the corporate veil, such as English law, or choosing a law or case law which is way more fluid and evidence-based, proceeding on a case-by-case -case basis in relation to interpreting the clause of a commercial agreement and lifting the corporate veil, such as French law. If a party thinks that it may be the object of a merger or acquisition during the execution of that commercial agreement, this party may prefer to select English law in order to compartment its own personal liability from the liability of any future acquirer and therefore become a more attractive acquisition target. And if a party thinks that its counterparty to the commercial agreement may be the object of a merger or acquisition in the near future, it may prefer to select French law as the law of the arbitration agreement in order to be able to go after the counterparty's parent company, which often is more bankable, uh, more solvent, in case things go sour. So this is it from me today. And it was a pleasure to discuss this case with you today. And I look forward to be back in touch with you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you.